If you ask any old Saints Row fan what they think about Saints for the third, chances are they are going to tell you that this game was the start of the downfall for this series, and they wouldn't exactly be wrong. Saints Row the third was meant as a soft reboot, but soon became the thing that would lead to the series eventually dying. But why was that? Why did this game take a drastically different approach away from the previous two games in this series? And why did this game suck? Well, in this video, I'll be answering those questions. But before we get down to it, why not hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to help me grow this channel. Much has changed since the ending of the Corporate Warfare DLC in Saints Row 2. The Saints have teamed up with Altar, propelling them into stardom. They got commercial deals, movie deals, and even their own line of clothing shops. Their days of gang banging are over, or at least the days of it that we are used to. Instead, they are just simply celebrities pretending to be gangsters. The game starts off with a bank robbery. Unbeknownst to the Saints, a neurocriminal organization had set up shop in Stillwater, and they had just robbed their bank. Because of this, the Saints are thrown in prison, bailed out by said criminal organization, and then kidnapped and put on a plane. The organization's name was The Syndicate, and it was headed by a man named Philip Loren. He gave the Saints a choice. They would give up 66% of their revenue, and in return, he would let them live. The Saints refused, and Gat does what Gat does best. As the boss and Shandy were about to escape the plane, they readied over to Gat, who told them to jump and that he would meet them in still water before he was killed off screen. Yeah, Volition thought it was a good idea to kill a fan favorite character off screen. But don't worry, because they backpedaled that in Saints Row 4 and actually brought Gat back. Like that would somehow save the game. But this here kicks off the main events of Saints Row the third. The boss lands in Steelport and is determined to get revenge. He does so by crushing Philip Loren to death with a giant ball. After his death, the gang decides to leave via a new bridge that was built to connect in Stillwater to Steelport. And this was also some sort of funeral procession for Johnny, as we see the Saints drive in a hearse, but they would never actually make it back to Stillwater, because the new leader of the Syndicate, a Lurchador named Kilbane, decides to try to kill the Saints by raining down rockets on them, destroying the bridge, which results in the Saints falling into the water below. Because of the Syndicate wrecking Johnny's funeral, the Saints wrought revenge. And this here is where I'm going to stop just for a moment, because this makes zero sense whatsoever. One could assume the reason why the Saints were so upset is because Johnny's body was now sitting at the bottom of the river. But we know from Saints Row 4 that Zinniac actually kidnapped Gat during his fight with Philip Loren. So why the hell were they even driving a hearse? This makes me believe that Johnny's death was always meant to be a solid thing but after seeing the backlash from the fans, Volition backpedaled that idea in Saints Row 4. Act 1 was alright, but the rest of the game is just honestly kind of meh. If you loved a certain hippie in Saints Row 2, well, you might be disappointed to know what they did to her in Saints Row the 3rd. Instead of the shiny we are used to, we get one who has a stick shoved so far up her ass you can see it coming out of her nose. And if that isn't enough, she isn't even really in the game all that much after the first act. Instead, she gets replaced by Kenzie. In all honesty, I did like the new cast of characters, but it is a shame that they decide to sideline her character, especially after everything we went through with her in the second game. Hell, if the people over at Volition were actually any good at what they did, which we all know they are not, they actually would have killed Shandy off instead of Gat, because having Gat in this game would have made it instantly better. Another problem that this game ran into was that there was just a lot of filler content. And when you compare it to the Saints Row reboot, you might actually think that the same team worked on both games. We have activities that we are forced to do, and that honestly makes up the bulk of this game. Some of these activities are new, and I say new in quotation marks, but in reality, they're just reskins of previous activities. 
The only real new thing we have in this game in the terms of activities is Professor Genki's super ethical reality climax. But the biggest problem that both of these games had, Saints Row the Third and the Saints Row Reboot, since we are still comparing the two, was that they were watered down versions of what they should have been. For example, in Saints Row 3, we are no longer trafficking drugs in the activity trafficking. Instead, we are trafficking Saints memorabilia. Awesome activities like FUDs are nowhere to be seen. The game has very few serious moments in it, and the gritty, dark game being a story we saw in the first two Saints Row games, it just isn't there anymore. But why exactly is that? What made Volition take such a different route with this game? Well, you might be thinking that they were trying to get away from the GTA clone title that the Saints Row series had been stuck with, and you would be partially right. However, the biggest reason might actually surprise you. You have no doubt heard that Anita Sarkeesian, a radical feminist who rose to prominence during Gamergate, influenced this series. She had a set of YouTube videos called Tropes vs. Women in Video Games, in which she just pretty much complained the whole time about everything in video games being sexist towards women. In fact, some people even blame the failure of the Saints Row series on her. And their evidence for this is that during an interview with the escapist, Steve Jarrows, Volition's creative director at the time, said, I actually think Chopes vs. Women creator Anita Sarkeesian's right in this case. Referring to a recent episode of Chopes vs. Women, when she talks about women being objectified in games. He then went on and said, I think that we tried to go and carry ourselves with respect and try to respect sexuality and respect gender as much as we can. Sometimes we fail, but hopefully we'll do better and continue to get better. So we have the creative director of Saints Row at the time, Steve Jower, saying that he agrees with Anita Sarkeesian. And when you look at this just as it is, you might agree with it. You might think that Anita Sarkeesian did influence this game, but that isn't the case. In fact, when a lot of people mention this interview that Steve Jarrows did, they leave out one very important detail, an important detail that I have left out until now. And that is this interview was done all the way back in 2014 after the release of Saints Row 3, and in fact, after the release of Saints Row 4. On top of this, Anita Sarkeesian is also the head of Feminist Frequency, and their Twitter account made this post back in August of 2014. Saints Row is not a satire of sexism, it's sexist satire. Same goes for the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Paired with the fact that Saints Row 3 still has things like Shipper Sean to kill you, the option to leave your female companions, Viola and Shawnee, to die at the end of the main game, I highly doubt that Anita was an advisor on the Saints Row series. So what really caused Saints Row 3 to be the watered down version of the games that we once loved? Well, it might surprise you to learn that it is actually the very thing that propelled the GTA series into the spotlight. And that, of course, is the media. Saints Row, like GTA, faced a lot of criticisms by different media outlets for their gang banger story. And as a result, had a lot of people coming for the series, mostly because of Saints Row 2. And Volition, they just couldn't handle the heat. In fact, according to New York Daily News, New York Police Department Union Chief at the time of the Saints Row 2 release, Patrick Lynch, said this about the game. These horrible and violent video games desensitize young people to violence, will encourage in depravity, immorality, will glorify in criminal behavior. And infamous anti-video game advocate Jack Thompson, you know, the ex-lawyer who had a hard on for GTA, came out and said this. Saints Row 2 is a GTA ripoff, and that as is true with pornography, as is true with violence, the subsequent products tend to push the envelope even more. We also have websites like the New York Daily Post who seem to have this absurd idea that Saints Row 2 glorifies the gang violence type behavior with comments like this. The lead character, a gangbanger whose appearance can be customized in great detail to resemble anyone, roams freely in the game's open world environment, wandering into liquor stores or scarring dope to get high. Players earn money or street credibility in a host of criminal unspeakable ways, like mutilating cops and enslaving women. And according to Wikipedia, at one point, Entertainment Weekly 
flagged Saints Row 2 as racist, misogynistic, crude, cynical, humorless, and stupid, and labeled it the worst game of 2008, despite previously giving the game a B and calling it a larcenious good time. You might be scratching your head, still unsure what I think these comments from the media, from these prominent people, led to the watered down story we got in Saints Row 3, which led to Saints Row 4, which led to God Out of Hell, and eventually the Saints Row reboot. But I'm about to tell you why it did. Think back to the previous activities that I mentioned in this video. Trafficking is no longer about dealing drugs. There's no real turf wars like we see in Saints Row 1 and Saints Row 2. You can no longer go into places to rob them or buy dope or alcohol. The activity fuzz has been left out of this game and the violence that we did see in the first two games have become goofified. If you pair this with the criticism that the series has received, mainly Saints Row 2, from the media, you can get a pretty good idea of what actually happened. But the ultimate reason why so many of us see this game as a failure to the series is because Volition, they let their fans down and unfortunately it is repeated behavior with them that we see even to this day. But ultimately, Gat explains exactly what happened to the Saints the best. What happened? We got arrested. No, to us. Burke's right. We traded our dicks in for pussies. Seriously. Movie deals, commercials. Saints name used to mean something more than body spray and some ass tasting energy drink. Well, what do you guys think about this? Do you have any other reasons why this game may suck? Do you actually like the game? Do you think it's not that bad? Or do you think that it really even shouldn't be a Saints War title? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you stuck around this long run, hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell as it would greatly help a fella out. Hope all of you have an amazing and wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.